Uh, all right. All right. I am on. Hey, man. Hey, how's How it going? You? It's 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 another day. It's a good day. It's a good day. I'm, I'm drinking right. decaf coffee. Are you still are you still a decaf guy? I'm or? still on the decaf train, man. I think I think I had some iced tea that was caffeinated a couple nights ago. And like I was up all night. Like it's it's messed me up. Now I can't just drink regular stuff anymore. So I might need to get back into is that really worth it? That's the real question. I, you know, we could do a whole episode on that because, because uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, I I, I, I've had a, I, I'll get a diet coke at a restaurant or something, and I'm not, I'm not being super legalistic, but I haven't had coffee with caffeine since I started this thing, and uh, yeah, I, my jump starts in the morning are slow. I, I'll say that my natural yeah. energy is not kicked in, um, so I, I don't know. Who knows? But that's not the topic for today. This is that's one right. that you brought to our attention um that i think it's a good time to address it so what are we doing yeah so uh there is and this is more popular kind of among the reformed uh brothers uh in the presbyterian world in the reformed baptist world and anyone else that uses that title reformed uh there was a there's a podcast called cross politic and they discuss theological topics i haven't really uh followed them all that much but they kind of threw out a grenade and uh decided that they would go after the Baptists in particular on Baptist theology uh, leading to individualism and ultimately uh, Baptist theology having a a significant part to play in the current transgender uh, movement of our culture, transhumanism and transgenderism being uh, one of the, uh, the roots of that cause is actually Baptist theology, according uh, to these, these individuals. And I just meant, you know, because we both come from a Baptist background um, and broadly evangelical I think that it is worth responding to this and trying to say, okay, what would lead them to say such a thing? And then is there any truth in that? So, yeah. um, so if you're ready we'll to go, it. let's pray and then we'll jump in. You got um, it. Join me in the Lord's prayer. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, if I was just hanging out with brothers in Christ from different denominations and someone said, you know, you know, who's really responsible for the transgender movement of the day, it's you Baptists and your, yeah. your, your Baptist theology. Uh, I mean, what would you, would you be like, uh, Oh, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. <laughs> uh, no. And I think, you know, I think after reading one of the critiques uh, already to this, I think one of the important things is like, like, you really need to be very careful when you when you um, say that um, something caused something with definitively, that's the reason like that's that's something you can't really point to, Um, you know, so I think that's unfair, even though uh, to say that, you know, especially uh, the, 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 the size of Baptists in the U S um, and then the, the Baptistic, uh, kind of, um, approach to ministry that many non-denominational churches use and how they're quite similar. I mean, the joke is always that they're Baptists just with cool, you know, websites, uh, you know, so there's that piece, right? Like that. You, you, so I guess if you want to play, who's the larger one to, in town and they're the ones to blame, um, you, you can do that, but that's, that's almost like, it's almost like looking at your town and saying, here's the big church in town. And, uh, you know, this town sucks and it's all their fault because they've done nothing. And you just can't play that game. Now, if you're saying they don't have any good influence or anything to, to, then that's, that's another argument. If, If as a Presbyterian brother, you want to make the claim that, um, Baptists have lost all influence and they're no longer relevant to this discussion. Okay, let, tell me why. But I don't think it's safe to say that, you know, Baptist theology caused the transgender movement. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that, and, and there's been a few people that have already responded to this. James White's got a, a take on it for about an hour and a half. If anyone follows James White that listens to us, uh, and he does a good job. And because and he really pointed out, like, I, I don't even know how to respond to that because I don't know. Uh, it does not follow, you know, clearly. What, what do you mean by a number of things? What do you mean by Baptist theology? Uh, because uh, are, are you talking about anybody who broadly practices uh, 
uh, credo baptism. You know, we wait for the profession of, of I believe, which is what credo means before baptizing. Uh, and, and so is it anyone who has that doctrine? Are they, you know, to be uh, responsible for this? And then in what way would that have the causative effect of moving us this way? And really what they were getting after is this idea that uh, there's an individual, a hyper individualism that is at work in uh, Baptist theology, uh, that the, um, the, the ego, the, um, the rise of the modern self, all, all of this kind of movement we've seen over the last 30 years uh, can be traced um, in this doctrine that uh, espouses that I, um, I get to receive salvation. And, uh, and so that since the, the receiving of salvation is a, a choice to be made, then uh, we are somehow downstream of that uh, theology, basically saying, I should have the permission to make any choice that I want to make with my body, with my soul. And, and um, so in my mind, okay, that, that, that clearly does not follow this to that. No. <laughs> but but that, that is the kind of thing. And I'm, so I'm thinking like, okay, if I was trying to at least hear your critique in a way that I, I'm open to be, being corrected, um, unfortunately, when you when you phrase it in this way, what what you, you you put your opponents back instead of trying to actually learn and try to understand. Okay, well, what what would be the better view? What you're actually doing is you're putting the guards up, and now we're not listening to each other, and, and I'm just going to get defensive. So I, I, this kind of rhetoric uh, polemic, it, it's not a helpful device. Um, it might get you some views, and you know you're going to get talked out on channels like this, which will probably up the views. And I think a lot of times that's what it's about. That's why you say incendiary things on. YouTube, you know, or podcasts. Yeah, uh, we should we should do more of that. That's maybe why we don't have more followers. We're just not um, nasty enough. <laughs> but my kids say it's because yeah. we're boring and we don't do anything fun like pranks, like the YouTube channels that they watch. But th that it might be just the other one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, my kids got into Dude Perfect, and you know the the, the shots that they're making exactly. in places. I'm like, yeah, we could just do that. I'll just start throwing like you know balls behind me and. Um, yeah, that, that's, you know, what we're trying to do is work through this stuff ourselves and then share how we're working through yeah. with others. And if that's a value, great. If not, I enjoy it with you. So, hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, let me speak on this because yeah. I, I don't think we're going to solve, I think, some of the idiocy that, uh, and, and maybe I'll just say it better this way, the carelessness in that argument um, in which that was made. I don't think that was a well thought out set of statements. Um uh, here's what I do want to say is I do think there are some individualistic elements in how we do some of these things that need to be corrected. Uh, because I, I do think that if, if you're talking about baptism in the sense of, I decide I have chosen to follow Jesus, I'll just choose to get baptized. I call myself a Christian now. Uh, that's, that's not really how it should work as well. Um, I mean, and so it, it is important to look at like even some of the earliest stuff that we've got from Baptists, like the 1689 confession that says, baptism is an ordinance of the New Testament ordained by Jesus Christ. To those baptized, it's a sign of their fellowship with him in his death and resurrection, and they're being grafted into him of remission of sins and of submitting themselves to God through Jesus Christ to live and walk in newness of life. Those who professionally, uh, personally profess repentance towards God and faith in and obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ are the only proper subjects of this ordinance. So this is important, um, is that we're recognizing something that you're not just anybody cannot just decide they want to get baptized. Yet we do know that there are many places that you want to get baptized, come on down, come on down. And some of that's driven by the numbers game. You know, you don't want to have another year where, you know, you're in the, uh, this is the Anaheim one, but you know, the, the, the yeah. church profile and saying, well, crud, we haven't baptized anybody. And so it'd be good to just accept whoever and come on down. Um, and so I think there's that piece to where if you're a church that's just simply baptizing people because they say, I want to get baptized without any follow up, without any real discussion, without proving genuine, like, like even in that, that, statement right there from the from the 1689 confession um there's a there's a piece where it is the church who is the church is the one at the guard of determining whether or not you truly belong like you might want to think that you are a saved uh but it is the church that will come and they will be the ones to determine do you fit into this or not uh anybody who just carelessly lets a child get baptized uh is is not doing 
due diligence when it comes to baptism. Like you should be trying to verify and trying to figure out where they're at, because part of that is right. If I'm going to present you to the church in baptism, uh, I am claiming that you you believe like we do, not that you just have chosen, but you believe the same things that we believe. And I and I think honestly tied to this discussion of baptism has to be tied to the discussion of church membership. Uh, and, and that's one that, that, you know, I think it, it'd be interesting to hear what those guys think about, do they have requirements of what it means for them to join into the fellowship as well? Because when somebody joins into the fellowship, we don't just simply say, oh, you got baptized. That's great. Now, some churches do, right? I mean, I remember the good old days and, I, and probably every church that I've been at, uh, you know, at some point, had had those days where they had the stack of cards at the back and, you know, brother Ben came down today and wants to join our church. And if you're excited, say, amen. And nobody amen. was vouched to see does, is brother Ben saved is brother yep. Ben. Uh, is he living a lifestyle that pleases the Lord is brother? You know, you know, nobody cares because we've just amen. And so, you know, that stuff has to get fixed too. And that's tied to this whole question. And I don't think that's a fair thing to say. It's uh, you know, that's caused the transgender movement. But I do think it's important to say churches need to, we need to, if we're going to say that you've joined our church or that you're getting baptized, uh, and that's what, those are, that's an important part. Your individualistic approach to that, however you might feel, has to be vouched for by the church body in order for it to mean something. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at on this. I think there's a fair assessment that should be made in that, though. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think that so much is, um, it, it's just, again, that it's it's kind of a stupid uh, comment on on its face. Uh, what, what you could say is our culture is obsessed with uh, individualism and the autonomy of the individual. And the autonomy of the individual that our culture is uh, pursuing that I have the right to death, I have the right to uh, augment my body in any way I see fit, I have the right to uh, health care, even if that means I have to compel you to provide it. Um, I, all of this talk today, which kind of breaks down under any close scrutiny, but nobody gets deep into it. Um, you could say that the the churches that are contributing this idea of, of a truly autonomous self are the churches that um, really need to uh, check their messaging and their doctrine. Th yeah. That might be fair. However, I don't think that the Baptists are guilty of this, or at least not traditional solid Baptist theology, either Arminian or Reformed. And yeah. of course, the, the people that are most livid about this are the Reformed Baptists who, who don't hold to um, a, an Arminian view of salvation that, that you actually can make a response of your own uh, to the movement of the Holy Spirit. Um, so they're, they're saying, hey, we're not even in that camp. So they're distancing them for themselves from us as um, Arminian Baptists because it, it, it must be our fault. And that's why I thought it would be, and sorry, we're not necessarily Arminian. We're, we're more that traditional um, somewhere between uh, two to four points, right? I don't know on the, on the tulip scale. I don't want to put you in a box, man. You be you. <laughs> you know, I don't like a box, yeah. man. I mean, I just yeah. say it's across the board. I, if you're going to ask me, does God choose and elect? Yes. Does man have a responsibility in responding? Is he held responsible for his decisions? Yes. Right. So, I mean, yeah. listen, and this is something I think is important, right? You get the, 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 the staunchest defender of election who is not your hardcore you know everything is ordained not that hyper but but somebody if you're going to ask them truly the the how that all works together there they will they will confess there is a mystery in that the system works and looks nice and tidy but at the end of the day when you read the text i think you got both yeah. right and so whether you what camp i find myself in i don't know but anyways keep moving the bible yeah. camp. that's what yeah. i like. <laughs> well, and, and I'm there too. And and again, we can we can debate what 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 we mean when we talk about election. What's the role of foreknowledge? We we, we can do all that stuff. And and I can do it at a pretty high level. Um, ne never really had much success converting somebody of the other opinion. And I'm not really open to being um, changed on that. Um, I've studied. Nor it. is I, that our I, role, by the way. The good. Well, I'd rather see people. What the Lord I, I, told I, us to do. I would rather see the elect come to Christ. So I'd rather spend time, you know, calling them unto salvation through the gospel. And let, let me just put it that way. So, yes. yeah, that, that's the kind of thing. Um, however, you know, to, to say, okay, the Reformed Baptists are, are uh, immune from this, but it's all the other Baptists. That, that's a, it's just, there's so many Baptists out there. And I would say the large majority of 
uh, non-denominational would fit under the Baptist title because it's Baptist theology. They just got to they got so um, independent. It's the it's the new independent Baptist movement, but they don't like the title Baptist. So they're they're what old independent Baptist churches were. Um, they just don't like the title Baptist, so they're non-denominational. But the doctrine is the same. And and so that's what we see running around. So you you have to kind of figure out who you're criticizing and then in what way. But just because someone says that um, we should wait to baptize someone, to practice the ordinance of baptism until confession of sin and a profession of faith, that that is not a an, an autonomous self. And um, and this is the other stuff too, where Presbyterians, they just get so um so loose in their accusations because i'm not a pelagian i don't believe any human being can make any effort to save themselves i do believe that the spirit will awaken the spirit within me to a point of receiving the wonderful gift of his calling or resisting his grace hardening your heart would be the the scripture that i would point to and um i'm on the side of the the aisle that says that there is a a a, a moment where that person can choose that that does not mean that they're autonomous. They could never even come to that moment without the spirit's quickening of their of their heart. And so I, I'm I've never taught an autonomous self, and then I've never taught individualism. I'm always preaching, you know, uh, those views just me and Jesus got a good thing going. You need to get going to church because it's not just you and Jesus. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he'd rapture everybody up. He got you. It's all that mattered. No, he's trying to save a world and he's building a body. Uh, and so you're called to be a part of the mission and a part of the body. So we're always pushing uh, against this rabid uh, individualistic idea and this self autonomy. So um, it, it's just it, it just doesn't follow. What what he's trying to say is that culture there has this movement of the autonomous self, and in his understanding of much Arminian Baptist theology, there is an idea that um, people have the ability to respond to the gospel. That's a form of autonomy. Therefore, it follows that that doctrine leads you down the transgender path is nonsense and it's yeah. it's uh, irresponsible and it's throwing out ideas that um would put me in a heretic camp when if we had a conversation there's no way that he would put me in a heretic camp i'm not pelagian and yeah. i can define it and i'm not semi pelagian and i can define that too that's not almost pelagian that's an actual theological camp that was deemed heretical so you know this is the stuff that just it, it infuriates me and i i get really upset about the baptists not because we're individualistic but because we're pragmatists and I get upset at the Presbyterians generally, at least the Reformed Presbyterians, because the other Presbyterians are out there wearing rainbow shawls and the lady uh, is preaching to you. So um, that their doctrine seems to not have held everybody in the faith from uh, infancy until um, God calls them home, uh, if we want to start throwing uh, bricks at glass houses. But you know, the, the reality is, if, <laughs> um, if, if I looked at this conservative group, my issue with them is not pragmatism. My issue with them is arrogance. And this kind of idea that we've got the, the most glorified doctrine that came to us from Calvin and John Knox and everybody else that's not with us is completely, um, you know, outside the camp, uh, you know, fine. But the, the truth is I respect Calvin. I respect John Knox. I also respect some of the really wonderful people who said the model in scripture is upon profession of faith and repentance yeah. of sin, we baptize. And so we aren't going to try to read in what we do with infants from church history or from some loose connection between the old covenant and the new covenant, because Paul uses circumcision as a sign of the new covenant. Uh, That may or may not indicate that it's okay to baptize infants. What we do know is that we baptize believers. And if an adult went to a Presbyterian church and converted and asked for baptism, they would ask that person to give a profession of faith and that they've repented their sins before baptizing that adult. And so this this whole thing is absolutely absurd. And it, it's really just frustrating because it, it, those that are kind of outside of the church and see interdenominational squ- squabbling around like this, it, it really undermines uh, the gospel. And I, you know, I'm not a gospel coalition guy, but I do believe in the gospel. And I don't I don't like having to take time to, to address these things um, because it, it made a sound bite. Yeah. Well, look, I think it's important, you know, because the, the, the big thing that he says, um, and this is just the, the snippet right here that he says, uh, Baptists say you choose your identity once you hit a particular age of accountability and rather than tell me, let me tell you who you are. Uh, right. And that's 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 the his point. Right. Is that you choose. Right. It's it's not like, you know, the, the truth is, if you're a family, if you're taking Deuteronomy six seriously, 
then you're already telling them this is who we are already. This is, you know, if you're doing, taking your faith seriously, beside the fact that I haven't baptized my child has not, is not saying that I don't take seriously telling them this is who we are as a family. These are the things that we do. This is what we are all about. This is why we do it. As if that is the, that's the linchpin. If I would simply just baptize them and then tell them who they are, right? That, that's, that is such a weird argument too. Um, but I also think that to get baptized, um, you tell them who they are when they get baptized. Your, your baptism is not how you choose. You don't choose your baptism. You don't get to choose what you want to do. And I do think there is a individualistic streak that runs through. And I think that's in a, in a, to try to be trendy or whatnot. And we, we see it with, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll go on this one too. Uh, we see it with wedding vows, right? Where we want to write our own vows. And, and really what should get down to the heart of that should not be whether I choose to, you know, always uh, take you to the places you want to go and always let you hold the remote, but it should be right. That I'm committing the, to, to, you know, to love you the way Christ loved the church. Like there should be some real doctrine that's involved with that and understanding what have I committed this relationship to? I'm not just entering in it, just telling what I think it should be like. I'm going to commit to say, I will do what it is to be. Um, and I think the same thing is for baptism, that if you're just doing it willy nilly, you think you're ready? Okay, cool. Uh, you're finally, you've said the right words, uh, then, then you've done a disservice. I, and I think, I don't know if I said it, I know I said it to you privately, but I think getting, we, we need to move past, I think, private baptism. That's something people do. Um, I don't agree with that. I think private Lord's Supper is not something you need to do. That was the big question we had during COVID, right? Yeah, Should we first... continue to do it? <laughs> if I'm yeah. watching uh, Royal Palms Baptist Church online and I'm taking Lord's Supper at home by myself instead of with the body, no, you don't get to choose that. Uh, yeah. You shouldn't be doing that. Uh, and so uh, I, I think uh, to join yourself in baptism, to join yourself in Lord's Supper, all of those are things that we should be teaching on, that it means something to join the body it, and that to stay. And that's the point of church discipline, is it not? Right. That if you yeah. are in, in that body and you're now choosing to go wayward, Jesus gave us of what we will do to make sure that we keep us on the right track. He gave us the instructions, which is Matthew 18. And so that's, that's how you kind of fix some of that. Not just simply you put them in the right way and it's all going to run that way. But when people think, you know what, I'm going to go off on my own way. I believe this, but I really don't believe anymore. That's where you go and you say, okay, well, let's, let's, I'm going to go talk to them. And if they don't want to do it, I'll go bring two others with me. So I think, I mean, yeah. we, we already see in within that how we are to function and how we are to keep keep ourselves once we join together. And it's not, and, and I know that we're talking about two different things, it seems like. What does it mean to join if, if you're critiquing, uh, you know, more of a P Pelagian approach to say, I'm choosing in all of these things. Um, I, I understand that theology piece, but I'm even just talking about what it, what it means to just simply belong uh, you didn't, you don't get to choose the terms of what it means to belong when you do that. Uh, your church, as laid out by the scriptures, determines what that means. And so I don't even think that's a fair assessment to begin with as well. Well, no, I, and um, Scott Annual has an article with G3 kind of as a friendly response. And uh, I, again, a lot of the Reformed Baptists are friends with with this group, I, I don't have any connection, so I don't feel like I need to even be friendly in my response. But but he has a great point. Uh, further, should we likewise use Farley's logic and blame gender confusion on pedo Baptists who tell children to identify as something that they don't truly believe in their hearts? And um, you know, so flipping the script. So we're going to dunk these babies or sprinkle them, you know, because again, why 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 immerse them? You know, that's just what the language of the text says. Um, but if we are uh, sprinkling these kids, baptizing them in any sense, and then they grow up and they, I, I never really believe that. Uh, are we not just giving them license to say that I can reject what I was told because I didn't actually believe it. And, and so, um, and, and the reality is, and I got into a fight on Facebook years ago because someone, a friend from high school posted an article that said, why Baptists really don't baptize their infants <clears throat> written by non-Baptists. 
And, and I thought it was a, you know, not, everyone doesn't always chose their, choose their headlines. Um, sometimes the editor does that to get, you know, more readership, but I read it and it was just kind of a nonsense article. And uh, so I responded and we got in a little Facebook fight, which just is never very um, helpful, but I just, uh, you know, it's always, it's always the Presbyterians. Uh, that's, that's kind of how I feel. But anyway, you know, the reality you is you, you look at this, high um, school, so I think that's, the, that's yeah, some baggage. The reason that Baptists don't baptize their babies because we don't think the scripture says that you should do it. That, that's that's why it, it's not like some like crazy conspiracy. We don't have a clear model in the scripture of it being done that way. We have numerous models of it be done post conversion, and so we <clears throat> we hold to that model. <clears throat> now I bapt I <clears throat> sorry, I um I had a baby dedication on Sunday, and it's super awesome. We had the parents come up. They committed before the church to raise the child in the faith. And the church stood and confirmed that they would also rally around this couple and pray for them and support them and pray for their child that he would grow up in the faith. And I, I know it with oil. Now, I know some people get nervous about that, but we, my dad did that and we do that. And, and oil is a signal of blessing. So we prayed for God's blessing on that child. And I didn't use water because water is the wrong element in my mind. Uh, oil is <clears throat> symbolic of God's choice and God's favor. And we prayed for God's blessing. And when that child reaches an age, uh, God willing, where he comes to believe what his family believes and the church believes, we will baptize that child and it'll be a celebration. Uh, there, there's nothing errant in that theology. There's nothing individualistic in that theology or that practice. And, and this is what we generally do. You know, not everyone uses oil, but we, we have baby dedications. And I don't dedicate everybody's baby just because they want me to. You know, if, if you're never at church and you want to show up for Mother's Day baby dedications, I don't like those services because... I think it's a great teachable moment when someone asks you if, if you'll dedicate their child, because now you can say, well, let me, let me just ask you some things. Are you, are you doing what you ought to do? Um, and, and it gives us a chance to be uh, lovingly corrective for those that are out of the walk and challenge the parents to live up to what they're saying they're going to do. Uh, so again, um, Baptist grew and exceeded the Presbyterians and the Anglicans and the Episcopalians and the Methodists as a result of Presbyterians and Methodists and Catholics and Anglicans and Episcopalians in adulthood, recognizing they never believed any of this. And they went to a revival and actually said, I do believe this and I want to make a commitment. And then they were baptized post conversion because they never made the personal commitment. And they'd just been doing what they were told to do. And, and so the reality is that this doctrine hasn't held. The, the Council of Dort that says if a mom and dad are Christian, their kids must be Christian. That, that is not played out very well. Uh, otherwise, we don't know who are the Christians in our own church. And so we have a bunch of posers that we don't know any better. And so the election doesn't actually bear out in any real sense of confidence of who's a believer or not. And, and that's your only explanation of why their kids fall away. Or it's more like the Baptist believe that <clears throat> we're going to do our darndest to raise our kids in, in the faith. But we recognize that, that God's call and their partnership and eventual conversion must take place. <clears throat> and, and and that's the only doctrine I think theologically that explains for a great apostasy that we're seeing. Uh, we're failing, and the Presbyterians should be one of the most largest denominations because they're doing it right, apparently, but they're not. Uh, they're not growing. They're not taking a dominion of the earth. Uh, they're smaller than the Baptists, and uh, it, 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 explain that. You know, Did the people just stop having kids, or did their kids fall away? And if the kids fell away, then perhaps your theology is giving people a false assurance that you would accuse me of giving. And that false assurance is not then being followed up upon with a personal commitment being required, which is what Jesus did. Uh, and so those are the things that I say. There's a collective aspect to it as well. I think you hit on that really well. But um, yeah, this stuff just fires me up because at the end of the day, um, I just, uh, I, I've got a thing for Presbyterians. They um, hey, I love well, Presbyterian doctrine too. I, I, I love, I love them. I, I think that they're right. But again, uh, I, I have a thing for this type of Presbyterian. Let me put it that way. Um, I get you. <laughs> I get you. And this is not the, uh, you know, it's, uh, you, we can have disagreements yeah. on some of this. I don't think, I mean, you can look and you can see the kind of relationship that you can have uh, across denominations for that. But you don't have to be throwing throwing grenades like that uh, because that's just not, it's just not a very careful thought out thing. And it's, it's, it's just a pain in the rear to have to deal with. Um, so anyways, look, man, I think we've said enough as it is. I, like I said, I think that it, regardless, it's a good, it's a good critique 
of do we do we make baptism individualistic um, in the sense of we allow anything goes and we allow anybody to you know say that just because they've professed um, that that's okay no I mean we can I think all of us every church should have some sort of a clear guideline for who gets in and what <clears throat> membership means and hearing your story I think that should be a big deal um, and and in doing that you are telling and defining what it means to be and not just baptizing anything that walks so I think that's a good I think there's a good critique in all that garbage there's still a good critique to be had and it's something that I think all all churches need to really think through is um, if I'm pushed by the numbers game that I just gotta put numbers on that I'm doing this um, and I'm being pragmatic, you're, you're failing there. We should, it should mean something to join. It should mean something to get baptized. I don't think there's anything wrong with waiting. Um, now with children though, too, you know, there's that, this is a whole other argument for another time, right? But you know, the question about, okay, when is too young, right? Yeah. Um, I think we should have that discussion at some point. Maybe that's for another video though, right? Baptizing children. Is there an age, you know, that we should wait till how should that be done? Because that's a big question. Uh, and, and you don't want, you know, and under the typically that question's asked because you don't want to have what is so common all the time in every group, not just yeah. Baptists. <clears throat> um, I believe these things because my parents and now I'm an adult and I don't believe those things anymore. Right. Um, we don't want that. So how do you, how do you fix that? But anyways, that's for another one, but this is good. I feel like we've hit. Yeah. Hit on and, what and, needs I, to be said. and just, just because we didn't, you know, offer a, a, a better, um, boogeyman, uh, rather than blaming Presbyterians or Baptists for the current transgender, uh, worldview and transhumanism ideals, we, we could also kind of look at the reality that humanity is depraved and there is a general rebellion against God taking place in the Western world in particular, and culture is pursuing that out of their own depravity. And the Presbyterians and the Baptists and the faithful churches of every denomination and non-denominational churches, we need to link arms and stand together to say uh, the only solution is uh, Christ and him uh, transforming your person and making you more into the image of Christ. And, and that that's why I, I think that this is just such a, a, a in poor taste because it gives the world an opportunity to discount us. We can't even agree uh, on these things. Uh, what we do agree is that this worldview is wrong. And the, the culprit in my mind uh, is best tracked to um, demonic forces and human depravity. And I, I don't think that anybody would argue that that is not a, a significant factor, if not the direct cause. But that's yeah. all. I just wanted to throw that out there. So that there's a better solution to the problem in my mind than, than blaming a, a sister denomination. <laughs> I, I would agree. I would agree for sure. Yeah. That's, that's, it's say that's probably more accurate. What you've said of who's truly to blame um, than, uh, than just a denomination and their views on really their views of baptism and how it to, is to be administered as the root cause of all of that rebellion. No, I think Romans one makes it pretty clear what's the root cause of the rebellion. And that's before, uh, you know, that's before we had Baptists and Presbyterians all split <laughs> together. So, and the Catholics uh, are just laughing from a distance saying, if the Protestants would just come back home, we could solve all of this. So <laughs> you want to close this out? <laughs> Let's do it, man. Let's do this. Uh, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look with favor on you and give you peace. God bless. Thanks for watching and listening. Right. And uh, I hope uh, this was helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to, do you want to post, do you want to post the link to the audio for that or just the G3 article? What do you think, man? Uh, I think the G3 article may have the, um, it has the, the it has both of them. It has their response and the video. Let's just do that. We'll post the G3. Yeah. If you want to look down below, we'll post the link to the G3 article so you can read it and listen to it if you want to. All right. Talk to you later. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.